that we have already connected through USB. Now, normally in the field, we don't use USB connection because USB is, is used just to do the first time connection and then we move to Ethernet because Ethernet is on the local area network so we can program the PLC from a remote place or we can have a cable hooked up to the PLC directly. So now we are going to configure the Ethernet port for the PLC connection. We go to configuration. Here you have different tabs. So you go to Ethernet. Here you will see that you have IP address by DHCP, IP address by boot P. But here I will use a fixed IP address. To connect to a PLC using network, we have to give an IP address. The IP address depends on your local area network. So my local area network is 192.168.100.1. But for the PLC, I will give it an address of 168.100.15. Because I have other devices which is on my local area network, so you cannot use an another IP. And we have to give it the network subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. I will input these two information on the PLC, and we also have a gateway address gateway it will be the internet connection of your LAN in my case it is 100.1 so we'll input this information on this By default, the subnet mouse is, is set. We apply. Now we have already applied the connection, but we have to enable this programming protocol, Ethernet, Modbus server, and auto discovery. Programming protocol is that we enable programming by Ethernet. If this is deactivated, you won't be able to program the PLC via network. The Modbus server is when we'll use the PLC as a slave for an HMI so that we can share information like uh, runtime, the input signal status like a flood switch or for a breaker. Auto discovery is when we use Schneider software that we can discover this PLC automatically. We will move on to the connection via Ethernet. Right now it's on USB. As you can see, now the address has already been populated, which is here. For this, we are going to go to the commissioning tab. We have to Basically, we'll just click save so that all information is saved. I will just remove. So basically, I will connect using this address. But second use, we will use a USB so as to transfer this IP address to the PLC. So we are going to connect via USB, which is here. So we click login. So right now I'm already connected to the USB. As you can see, the program between the PLC and the controller is different. So we have to transfer the program from the PC to the controller. So we'll just do this. So the controller is already running the previous program. 
but the difference is just we have set a new IP address. This will override the program, we'll click OK. We'll click Start to execute the program with the new IP address. So now we'll log out from the USB connection. I'm going to disconnect the USB connection. I will connect US using this network cable. This is a RJ45 Ethernet cable. So we connect it to the Ethernet port. When it's connected to a switch, the orange and the green light will light up. The green LED will show communication activity. Now we'll try to connect using the Ethernet connection. So we'll select the IP address. As you can see, the connection has changed from USB to Ethernet. So we'll click on the network, we click login. As you can see, now I'm already connected to the controller. And I have the feedback of what's happening inside the PLC. So here is a connection made by Ethernet. And we'll just make a basic test to show the program is, is running so i will switch on rung one that is activate k1 i will switch it off i will switch on rung one that is using so i will switch it off now you can see the program is running and we are connected via Ethernet. When we are connected, we can go to the tools and see we have different tabs which are here. The memory consumption of the PLC, that is the program that has been written to the PLC the number of lines that I have used. So right now it's 13 lines and remaining is 11,987 lines. So as you can see, in terms of memory, we have plenty of space so we can have a huge program running on it. These are the memory percentage. So here is a symbol list, the different address, the symbol and the comment. These are the different tabs that we have. So these are the input signal, the output signal. These are the memory bits that we use when using Modbus. Memory words, same for Modbus, that is Modbus words are used for like voltage, current, level, because we have to use two registers and these are constant words. So thank you. I will do another video where I will show you how we do a Modbus connection between the PLC and HMI.